you know, a mathematician would think about it in terms of a tree. A tree has a trunk and then thick branches coming out and then thinner and thinner and thinner branches and finally leaves. The more basic something is, the closer it is to the trunk of the tree. It's important to have the leaves at the end of the tree, the particular specific use of something in research to make a product. That's very important. But the idea of leaves without the tree that holds the whole thing up, it just isn't a, a functioning organism there. And so the basic, the fundamental, the foundational is clearly critical. You say the closer to the trunk you are, the more basic you are. What is the trunk? <laughs> What is the trunk? Well, this is, this is where the analogy breaks down, because this is a forest. There's not a single trunk. There are foundational ideas that give rise to things in mathematics, foundational ideas in biology. Evolution is a foundational idea. There's a big trunk of evolution, and applications you know, way out at the ends. There's a big trunk of molecular biology, the, the idea that information is encoded in cells, and that it's encoded in DNA. There are trunks in mathematics, the, the understanding of the structure of numbers, prime numbers, and the factorization into numbers. This is a foundation of all of number theory. Things that you learn about prime numbers might be applied in many, many places. It needs advocates because to the general public, the useful thing that comes at the end seems more directly valuable. The iPhone, which is gorgeous, and I love my iPhone, seems so important and directly valuable, but all the fundamental physics and the electronics and the computer science that makes an iPhone possible, they're crucial to the existence of an iPhone. And Steve Jobs would have said that, and Tim Cook at Apple will say that, that the beautiful things you encounter in your daily life, whether it's an iPhone or a drug that'll cure a disease, all of those Technological marvels depended on lots of basic research that you don't see unless you're a scientist or a technologist. And so it's very possible to go through the world and, and not understand that when, you, when Siri listens to you on your iPhone and interprets your voice and figures out what to do, it's building on decades and decades of basic research by computational scientists who thought about how could you possibly do voice recognition? And then artificial intelligence to figure out what are you really asking when you say those words? All sorts of curiosity-driven questions in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s that all underlie Siri when you press the button and ask it to do something for you. Why do we have to talk about basic research? Because it actually costs money to do it because society has to invest in it. Because it turns out mathematicians aren't free. If you want a society with mathematicians, you have to support mathematicians. If you want a society with basic biologists who are making the foundations for, the, for curing cancer, you have to pay for expensive research labs. It is a social investment. Societies decide what they want. And so when they invest in basic research, they're committing a portion of the national treasure to those activities which might not seem of obvious value but turn out to have tremendous return on investment, hundreds of fold return on investment. So as a society, we decide, do we want to build roads and bridges? Yes, we do, because they will pave themselves back by allowing commerce and making it easier to sell goods and services. Do we want to have a national defense? Do we want to do other things? Do we as a society want to invest in basic research? Because it turns out that with only a few exceptions, you can't just do it with a paper and pencil. Even for mathematics today, computers play a very important role. And even if they didn't play an important role and you could just do it with a paper and pencil, the mathematician has to be paid for in some way. There's a beauty to basic research. And people do appreciate beauty. They support intellectual endeavors of all sorts and creative and artistic endeavors. We understand the importance of art in our world and music in our world. There is an importance and a beauty and, a, and, a, and a, just a grandeur to understanding the structure of the universe, the stars, how they all work. Now, as it turns out, even that, understanding the, the cosmology, ends up having some applications. But you don't have to defend it entirely in terms of applications. You can defend it in terms of the beauty of knowledge.
I don't buy this distinction between basic and applied. Basic research can be applied often. So I, I don't buy that as an important distinction. Should people start their careers worrying about fundamental things? Yes, just no question. Whatever you end up choosing to do a little later, starting by thinking about broad questions, is just the right way to start because you see the bigger picture. And so all young people should think about the basic first, think about the very big picture first. But since I don't think that basic is on one side of a wall keeping it away from applied, there's no reason that people who are thinking about basic fundamental questions can't also be applying it along the way.